Go ahead and uh, do a build video because you guys didn't tell me not to. So, since no one said not to do one, here we are. <laughs> so, I got the spider on the voice coil. If you look in here, we got the mark for the top of the pole. It's easier for me to see this than one marking this to the top of the plate. So, I did this one first. And then did that one proportion it to the top of the pole piece so I could see it from down in the center. It's just a lot easier that way. And a lot of the build videos don't show them gluing on the outside, just gluing on this side. But uh, kind of doing it the way Spark Dead did it on his video where you kind of build a drop in. I'm not going to do a complete drop in like he did, but this way I can get a bead of glue on the bottom. So I got that on there, and it's this epoxy. It's Loctite epoxy. This is good stuff. I've been enjoying using it for all this build stuff. But um, basically, I use the shims, put the voice coil in first, got the spider where it needed to be on the voice coil, uh, and then double checked it with the mic from the edge here to the first roll and then you check it all the way around obviously the spiders aren't perfectly flat but if you got it even from here to that first roll then the rest of it's gonna end up being correct whenever you set it down glue it and press it down clamp it whatever you do to get that flat against the landing but it'll put this the voice coil where it needs to be on the pole <clears throat> so that's where we're at right now and uh as we put it together i'll just do um some little short videos so we don't have to make a giant video about it but that's where we're at so we got this all bonded up voice coil bonded to the spider you guys remember the spiders were too big for this basket by about a quarter inch so I had to trim them pretty proud of my little fit came out good in the shims it's dead center fits inside the little flange all the way around <clears throat> you can see maybe there's my little mark down in there even with the top of the pole and this is in the resting position so basically you want the voice coil to be dead center on the top plate of the motor so you have an equal amount of travel back and forth so got that I had to cut the cone also there really wasn't anything I didn't have to trim or fit on this because the basket's 14 and three quarters, not 15 inch. And this was for a two and a half inch voice coil, I think. The spider was for like a two point, I don't know, two and a half inch voice coil probably also. Um, I just took my time and I set the voice coil on top of the cone, marked it with a silver Sharpie, took this, because the blade's narrow and it was a was able to make turns and stuff with it and uh cut straight down started off at the edge right here and then trim my way in slowly rotating the knife as i got closer to the my line that i wanted to cut and then cut straight up and down that way there's more contact area 
for the voice coil when it inserts in to the cone and uh, pretty much got it in one shot it was a little tight and what you do then is you can take pretty much anything sharpie screwdriver and just go around the cone where the hole is hold the cone real firm or set it on something flat and go around the inside and just go around three or four times you know putting pressure against the sides and it will open it up so yeah so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and bond the spider down and the voice coil and um, then we can put the leads in put the cone in after all this is dry and um, glue the outside and then we just got our solder work soldered in the leads through the cone into the tensile leads the voice coil leads to the tensile leads this is the one I nicked I nicked it the other day with a razor blade when I was cutting this out I nicked it here and here I reached out to Patrick and he's like man just encapsulated in resin it's fine so I soldered it up with some silver bearing solder because it's a little stronger than the average solder and uh, that's what we ended up doing so we're running it so that's where we're at so we'll come back in just a bit something else I learned during this process is with all the fabrication and changes and trimming there's going to be ways that stuff goes together better than other ways so it's good to just pre-fit everything so this cone this is the best way it fits where it's just the most centered where this drops in the easiest all the way around without any interference with anything i know it seems like hey it's round what's the difference but there is uh whenever you start trimming and everything like that there's going to be ways that it goes better than other ways you can see the holes for the tensile leads you got to line those up with where your terminals are going but uh i dropped it in tried it both directions it dropped in the easiest this way and centered up to where it looks the best so i just put four little dots so when i put it back together i'll just line that up and uh i did the same thing with the spider turned it both ways in the landing and then looked at the hole and I know it seems like hey it should fit either way but when you trim everything uh, stuff doesn't come out perfect you see this hole I mean it does not look that great is it centered yeah it's centered you know but it's not flawless so uh, it's just best to fit everything before you assemble it and it'll come out a lot better once the glue's on that you never know once the glue's on the bottom just like this you know I mean, that's completely factory now right it's pretty rough before i put the glue there so just food for thought all right we're back on the sub build pioneer mashup I don't know if you guys caught some of the other videos, but uh, we took the Storm Vega aspect out of the build. We had to go with this cone right here because there was a lot of fitment issues with the Storm Vega cone. So this is sort of a universal cone. It's a good subwoofer. It's got a high density butyl surround. This stuff lasts forever. And it's a pretty kind of a medium weight in the subwoofer category and uh a little bit on the thicker i don't know i guess it's medium thickness too on the on the cone it's it's strong it's not it's, i'm never gonna have an issue with it but um so to kind of recap we mounted the spider in the voice coil last night with the shims and the shims have got to be in there uh, when the cone goes in because right now without the shims you can see the voice coil rocks 
in the spider and the shims keep it centered because what happens is when the cone goes over the voice coil the cone provides a second layer of stability for the voice coil so when the code slides over it's going to mount probably half an inch higher well I don't know roughly half an inch higher than the spider <clears throat> the way the surround and the spider works it doesn't allow any movement this way now it can move this way but it cannot go this way at all and same with the surround on the cone it doesn't allow any movement this way so it's uh, imperative to have the shims in when you do the cone because once that's centered it's going to stay that way uh, indefinitely, you know, until you recone it or whatever. And I was also saying last night, you know, once you trim all this stuff, it's not going to be exactly perfect. So it's good to line it up in a way that it is the most centered as possible and the most lined up as possible because it's going to be variations. There's no room for error on this because. I trim the surround down, I mean the uh, spider, and it literally is right to the edge of the, if it's down inside of here, it's right, you see it, I mean it's right there, and there's not room to take any more off, so literally the basket and the motor had to be exactly right, and to get this to where it's ultimately going to be in the center of the motor, and fortunately we ended up there. Um, I eyeballed some of it. You know, you saw me do the video where I put the motor on. And, uh, you know, but fortunately we landed dead center. So my little template I made worked. And then I made them, the holes a tiny bit sloppy so I could still make some adjustments by eye. And uh, I've been doing that stuff for years, so I'm really good by eye. I'm not recommending everybody do that, and I'm not saying I'm... Uh, Superman at that either but on these we landed uh, in good shape so the only thing left is uh, the next thing I should say to do is put the cone in so we're gonna obviously we don't have to worry about the mark anymore for the the voice coil height because it's already located by the spider These are just manila folders that have been cut and folded and until they fit. You know, when all four of them are in place, they're reasonably tight, not super snug, but enough to hold it centered. Yeah. And remember, we got these two little dots right here. That we're going to match the cone up to because we determined that was the most <clears throat> centered place for the cone to be. The tinsel leads need to be folded back because they're going to go from the outside to the inside. And then the voice coil leads need to be on the inside. So they fold in. I see it. We just got to wiggle this down on there. I'm going to have to work it a little bit with the... No, no, we're good. Oh.
Yeah, man. Look at your spider and make sure it's not pressing the voice coil down. I need to work it around a little bit if you see that. You don't want the suspension to be positioning the voice coil out of center. In the magnetic gap, like you don't want it to be, it needs to be dead center where you initially made your marks and everything. So I guess you could double check. So I've done, covered it up because that's what I do. I see it. Yeah. There's a sharpie line. Oh, it's it's right where it needs to be. You got all the time in the world to get this right because as soon as it's wrong, you're starting over again. So, something doesn't feel right, or you just don't think it's going exactly right, man, just stop and put it away for a day or two. Come back to it. <clears throat> Look at it real careful because once you put your glue on, that's it. And if it's wrong, you're probably going to have to get all new. There's people that can save these voice coils and stuff out of speakers that have already been built, but I don't think I could do it. But, you know, I'm still kind of new to this stuff. Pull your shims and look at your gap. Go around, you can look at the gap and you gotta look straight down, but you can see the bottom with a good light, you can see the bottom plate of the magnet. And you go around with the light looking straight down. And it'll it'll really tell you where you're at. This looks pretty good right now. Next time I'm making my shims wider because this one's the easiest one to use. These other ones are a little more flimsy. Made them long so I don't leave them in there because that's something that happens too on speaker builds. People leave them in there then you gotta pop your dust cap off after you glued it down which is doable but not fun. I think we're pretty centered. Let's 
spider looks flat. It's like it's relaxed in the resting centered position. I think we're in good shape. I'm going to bond this part here. There's really no reason why you can't do this also, but I think I'm going to let that cure and then come back and do this. All right, so we got that bonded. <clears throat> I'm gonna let it cure. Once that's firm and can't go anywhere, that frees us up to glue the surround down. Then we can do our leads. So we just uh, put the tinsel lead through the hole. That's what I did on the last one anyway. This one seemed a little short, man, but that worked. I did last time was uh seen other people do the same thing. I just wrapped the entire this whole voice coil wire around there in one spot, you know, one spot about that wide. And then uh these have already these are pretty high quality, they've already been tinned with solder, and so have the leads on the voice coil, so it's already ready to be soldered and then use this uh i found this to be really good solder this harris it's got silver in it and uh just solder the fire out of it man solder it real good and then reach to the back side pull it down until it's all the way down against the cone and then press what's left of that lead tight against the cone as best you can. And then you're just going to use the, I guess it's rubber ICA glue, but this has a slight little bit of flex to it, but it'll hold that lead down to the cone. And so it won't vibrate loose later. And that's it on those. So the glue right here on the voice coils set pretty good. Cone the voice coil. So now we can go ahead and do surround the basket. And for that, we're going to use this this one. Seems to work the best for surround the basket and spider to basket. For whatever reason, you got to use epoxy on the voice coil. I guess because of I really don't know why, but. I think the epoxy is more rigid and this is a rigid junction where this needs to be a little bit on the flexible side. I think I use a lot more of this than you're supposed to, but I'd rather waste a little bit extra glue than have any errors. That's it. We just got to push it down and... It gets pretty tacky after about 15 minutes. Sort of makes the rubber want to roll up. Or the foam. I don't know how it does on... Well, yeah, on the last one, I think I experienced that. This makes the rubber want to roll. kind of reacts with it. But once it starts getting tacky, then... uh it stays down. I'm gonna work with it till it gets there. And then I've got these. I'm just gonna put them around and clamp them. You know, just fit them in there and clamp them down. And then Stuff's pretty dry in about an hour. I wouldn't put music to it probably for 24 hours just to be on the safe side, but it's pretty good after about an hour. So realistically, you could probably put music to it three or four hours later. I wouldn't, but 
Sometimes you just get, you know, a little impatient. Overall, this has been a fun build. I've been enjoying it. I've learned basically hands-on most scenarios that you're going to come across in a subwoofer type speaker build. So it's been worth it to me to do this project. It's kind of how I've always done everything. I'd rather get the mistakes out of the way early than keep coming across stuff that's going to be you know, a new lesson to learn. So I just took this on and this is typically how most, uh, anytime I just decide I'm interested in something, this is kind of how I enter into it. And it's not so much that I'm that great with my hands or anything. I mean, I'm pretty good with my hands just because of years and years of practice, but as much as it is, I have the, I'm very patient, super patient. What you don't see on camera is me. Now, I didn't do that so much on this build because I'm pretty comfortable now, but with the other one, there was a lot of time involved. Me stopping, looking, sitting back, you know, trying to think of every scenario. Hey, honey. <laughs> little one, yeah. I got to go back out in a little bit. Hey, buddy. What you got there? Hi. Not much. Not much. How was, your, how was your day at school? Good. What did you learn? Nothing. Nothing. It's our review. What? What? So you just remembered to remember. Yes. Okay. Solder at man. Where my solder at, man? What? I don't know. I just had it five seconds ago. I went to set it down somewhere. So I wrapped the leads, I wrapped the voice coil wires around the tinsel leads. Now what I generally do is pretty, usually takes up most of the tensile lead, sticking way up high. And then I'll put my thumb on top, push down while I pull from underneath and it kind of squishes all the wraps together. I would just gotta solder it, if I can find my solder. So I got my solder back. All right, see ya. <clears throat> Again, solder smoke not the best thing to breathe. Give you a headache and stuff.
Do what? It's four hundred dollars too expensive to buy new spark plugs in. What kind of car is it? Let me guess it first. Some of those <clears throat> you can't access the back plugs and it's a massive time consuming job so sounds high to me but after you get it soldered give it a little tug test pull it against the cone pull on it make sure make sure it doesn't slide out of there I'm sure it won't, but it's worth doing anyway. Because you can see the solder in the lead bubbling up, solder on the tinned uh, lead from the voice coil, the tensile lead and all that bubbled up at the same time. Then we fed the solder in. So it's, it's good to go. And just pull them down and then Tuck in everything tight to the cone as you can. Put your rubber CA glue on it. This was really not wanting to cooperate. Rubber CA glue is sort of slow about curing. Doesn't have to be perfect. They have activator for this glue that very rapidly speeds up the gluing process. I don't have any, but I'm definitely going to start keeping some around for this stuff because you can just pss, 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 and pretty much dries instantly. That's pretty much it for the top. Just watch for it to start tacking and then make sure it's down as tight as it can be. It's going to take a little while. I don't mind babysitting the glue, getting it the way you want it, you know. All right, it's been a few hours. I had the clamps on there with the fuel line. And uh, the glue's dry, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off.
point over the voice coil and uh, just check the, the gap all the way around the pole. Man, is really centered good. <clears throat> Couldn't be happier with it. I think this thing's really going to perform. No interference anywhere. Give you a little it's centered up real nice. So, couldn't be happier with the build. Trying to decide what to do as far as the cabinet goes. Got a few different ideas. Pretty much always dealt with the same ported type enclosures. And I used to horse around with band pass stuff a long time ago. Bandpass is cool, but it's kind of a one-trick pony. It's uh, real good at real low frequencies. I kind of want these to cover a broader range than that. So I've even been looking at, I haven't been able to sit down and listen to other than, you know, through YouTube channels and stuff, but open baffle stuff. Because this has a tight suspension, it would probably be okay in a free air application. But... I don't know if I can, I don't know. It, it, they seem like they're just kind of inefficient. Uh, but it was just uh, something I was thinking about doing. So Now we can do the dust cap. The terminals, solder everything. I still need to do these gaskets. But uh, I got to shave a little tiny bit off of them all the way around. Because they're a little bit too wide to fit down in here. And then these will be ready for to go in a cabinet. So good stuff, man. We'll come back and uh, do the dust cap and the terminals, and we'll be done with the uh, subwoofer build. Okay, I think we're gonna do the terminals next. The voice coil is gonna tell you which was the positive or the negative, so you just have to put a DC battery on it. And um, if it's polled correctly, uh, then when the positive side of the voice coil is hooked to the positive side of the battery, the speaker should move forwards. So we're going to test that right now. All right, so that was backwards. Okay, so we know our connections are good and that the positive is on the left side. On that voice coil and probably gonna be on the left side on this voice coil also yeah we know our connections are good which we already knew that but okay so now we can do our terminals all right we're gonna we'll put together our, our little uh, I don't know what you call these terminal terminal block. I ended up going with these gold ones because the chrome ones aren't long enough here on the threads. After they go through the insulators. And just to verify, I check these with a ohm meter and they're just like a piece of steel. They're completely conductive. So if you just put a piece, if you just put a pair of posts in this carbon fiber, you're going to have problems. You're probably going to smoke your amp. But these little insulators make it possible. And I really couldn't come up with anything that was strong enough, that wasn't conductive. And I'm sure there's something out there that I didn't think of. But I came up with this and uh works good. So 
You just have to use these insulators, which I'm missing one of them. So I'm gonna have to get another speaker terminal to fin actually finish this completely, but we can do this side and get everything else assembled. And then we'll just have to put one post in because I'm missing the red insulator. And my fine organizational skills. So we know that the left side is the positive. And these are oriented you notice the holes closer to the top. So they have to be positioned just so. A good fit as you can see nothing can touch once that's in there and I put epoxy just so there's not any little threads of carbon fiber sticking out or anything we missed the little insulators seem to be pretty tough I tighten them down pretty tight they're not splitting or anything Okay, one side. CA glue on there to keep it from vibrating. So we got the terminals on. They're okay, you know, they work. Just to give you a little example of uh, how conductive this carbon fiber is. Might as well just be a piece of steel. Not so much on the face, but the side. Don't want to have anything at all when you measure the post to the terminal to the plate zero so there's no conduct connectivity there so we're in good shape but yeah I just want to show you that if you use carbon fiber or any just whatever material you're using do a little homework on it because I almost just threw these on I was like oh I'm gonna use carbon fiber and I started thinking carbon sounds like it might be conductive. And then I looked it up and sure enough. But we were able to make it work. We just got to put these leads in here and solder them up. Do the dust cap. That's pretty much the build on these. 
but you guys have already seen the other one playing. It was kind of a spoiler video. I knew you was probably. I just wanted to go ahead and do a video of them playing, so. So this is it. This was the what we started the channel on. These old speakers, these old 1974 pioneers, and uh, we definitely come full circle with them. Created something really cool. Just got to figure out some cabinets, and then we can maybe do some jam sessions or something. And uh, we're just gonna do some other stuff. You've seen my other videos, so I'm trying to decide exactly what direction to head the channel in. Um, this project just kind of was budding right at the time I decided to start this channel. So that's why we started with this one and I've milked it and stretched it and just because more or less that this is the only times I had to work on it were little pockets of time where I could do little things. So kind of stretched out the videos, but that's okay. Uh, some people like that detail and uh, like to kind of, you know, watch all that detail. So it's for those folks. So thanks for hanging in there with this and um, we'll get this one capped off. No pun intended and finished up and then we'll get some cabinets built and stuff and do some other things on the channel. So thank you guys for chilling out with me.